You're live. Oh. I'm live? <laughs> hey guys, it's Emma Vigling with TYT Politics coming to you from the YouTube studio. So this is where we're going to be doing some videos for the meantime while we kind of settle in in New York. Um, there are a lot of people, a lot of moving parts right now, but exciting stuff right now. Um, I just wanted to talk about where Merrick Garland is because he seems to have gone completely MIA. Where in the world is Carmen Sandiego? I mean Merrick Garland. I don't know if you guys played that computer game because I did when I was little, but the outrageousness of Donald Trump has completely distracted us from the fact that Obama was not able to put through a Supreme Court nominee when back when he nominated him in March doing his constitutional duty. So that's one of the most outrageous things that the Republicans have done, I think, in a while. And we have a wide, a wide array, a swath of outrageous things to pick from, from what the Republicans are doing. So Merrick Garland, many progressives were upset with this pick because he was the most centrist pick imaginable. He's very, he didn't have a great stance on Citizens United and campaign finance law. He upheld some of the disastrous uh, campaign finance regulatory uh, cases when he was in the lower courts. So progressives were not happy about this pick, but typical Obama played towards the middle and maybe the Republicans will appease him. That has never happened. The Republicans are obstructionists to their core and President Obama throughout his entire eight years as president fell for it every single time. And Merrick Garland is a prime example of why you can't appease these radicals because it's just not gonna work. So Merrick Garland somehow has gone MIA, but apparently he's back here in cases again because the Republicans just refused, refused to let him onto the Supreme Court and do their constitutional duty. So Judge Merrick Garland was back on the bench on Wednesday, last Wednesday, donning his black robe and hearing arguments for the first time since his un ultimately unsuccessful nomination to the US Supreme Court, which was announced in March 2016. Um, Garland stopped hearing cases after President Obama nominated him to the Supreme Court on March 16th to replace the late Justice Antonin Scalia. Republicans announced their opposition to Obama filling Scalia's seat even before Garland was revealed as the nominee. Obstructionists. Arguing that it was improper for the president to choose a nominee in an election year. What are you talking about? Antonin Scalia died. I'm so sorry that was inconvenient for your political narrative, but that doesn't mean that you get to leave a, 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 a seat completely free on the Supreme Court. Do your duty, but they're not interested in governing, and that's what the problem is with this radical party that is in power now. In the, there are only four states where the Democrats have power on the state level, and now we have the, the presidency, the House, and the Senate, all Republicans, good job, corporate Democrats. So with Republicans in the majority, Garland never had a confirmation hearing before the Senate Judiciary Committee. So somehow we've all forgotten about this, and now Donald Trump is going to have that seat to fill. And a, a, a variety of others probably, you know, hold on for your dear life, Ruth Bader Ginsburg. I, again, I'll piggyback you into the, into the chambers every single day if you need, if that's necessary. But Donald Trump is going to have the opportunity to fill that seat and potentially many others. So they're saying that it would have been improper, improper to fill that seat during an election year. You know what the Republicans are completely uninterested in being proper. Everything they do is improper. Their obstruction is improper. You know the de what the Democrats are obsessed with? Being proper. So what would have been improper is if President Obama filled that seat in the re as, a, as a recess appointment. There is a precedent for it, and I'll read to you from the New Republic, which lays it out beautifully. beautifully. In Article 2, Section uh, 2 of the Constitution, it says that the president ha shall have the power to fill up all vacancies that may happen during the recess of the Senate. This has been used for Supreme Court vacancies before. William Brennan became, began his court tenure with a recess appointment in 1956. Any appointments made in this fashion expire at the end of the next Senate session. So a Garland appointment on January 3rd of 20, this is hypothetical of 2017, would not, uh, would last until December 2017, the end of the first session of Congress. So meaning Garland could be filled in that, it could be in that role for a year, but then Congress would have to reapprove him. But that would very much increase the likelihood that he would stay on the court because he would have given an opportunity to govern and people would have seen, maybe the Republicans would have seen, oh, this guy's a centrist, 
and we can deal with him. Uh, as opposed to if Obama had actually gone through the process and pushed a real liberal on the court. Um, but why January 3rd? The New Republic explains. Because the president's recess appointment powers were significantly constrained by a 2014 Supreme Court ruling. In a 9-0 decision in the National Labor Relations Bo Board versus Noel Cunning, or Canning, the court said that the president cannot appoint individuals to fill vacancies if the Senate holds pro forma sessions every three days. Through these sessions, common since 2011, merely gavel in and gavel out the Senate chamber, they have the practical effort of keeping the Senate active, therefore blocking the recess appointment power. But even the court's most conservative members acknowledge that a president can make recess appointments during intercession recesses, such as the break between the first and second year of Congress, or the break between outgoing or incoming Congresses. So that could have been done. And uh, Teddy Roosevelt once used this very tactic uh, to make hundreds of appointments. The New Republic cites uh, another article talking about how Teddy Roosevelt uh, used that as precedent. So again, now we're gonna, because Obama was unwilling to use this, albeit extreme tactic, we're gonna have Trump nominees for the rest, for, for, for years, for decades, because Obama plays you know, as Jordan likes to say, goes to a knife fight with a spoon and the Republicans are making shivs out of Coke bottles and stabbing each other all over the place and stabbing the Democrats all over the place. That's why the Democrats lose constantly because they don't play ball. They don't try and actually fight for their positions. And now look at all the disastrous effects that are gonna come into effect because Donald Trump is going to make these appointments. So I think the worst case scenario, you know, about the Supreme Court, and Bernie Sanders has said this as well, is that um, they have the power to make it even harder for minorities and Democrats and liberals to vote. And that's what I'm scared about. So you saw what a fairly conservative center-right uh, Supreme Court did with the Voting Rights Act. They could do that in a variety of ways with an even more conservative Supreme Court. So all of this beyond just the fact that we have voter fraud and voter suppression, gerrymandering, issues where southern states can basically section off minority populations so that they don't matter and don't have a voice in state and, and, and federal legislatures. That's what a Trump presidency could create. So that's really worst case scenario. Trump and his goons could appoint someone who makes it harder for Democrats and liberals to come to power by basically rendering liberal populations obsolete and gerrymandering and disenfranchising them. So this is what Obama not having balls does. It has actual tangible consequences. So where in the world is Merrick Garland? He's back in his position and he's not on the Supreme Court. All right, guys, have a lovely day and I will talk to you soon. Bye.